Hello again, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Nisgoda from AZH Wound Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And thank you for joining us on another edition of the Wound Care Window. Today we're going to be uh, presenting an interesting case and we're going to do something a little differently. Last week I applied a cellular and tissue based product uh, to a patient that I was seeing. His wounds progressed to a point that he needed some matrix and we used a cellular tissue based product to provide that matrix. Very interesting product, you're going to see that today. He responded incredibly well. So what I want to do is show you the results of a technique that I used last week and then based on that trial I'm going to do the same procedure for his other wounds. So that you notice that these wounds have eschars and these do not. We applied the dermal matrix last week to these wounds here. You see the matrix has been well incorporated. There's an eschar formation. We're going to take that off, find out what's underneath. Hopefully nothing. Hopefully we've had a healed wound. Um, but I'm also going to debride these wounds and reapply uh, the matrix dressing. We also have some wounds uh, on this uh, medial aspect of the leg and we're going to go ahead and graft these as well. This patient presented with severe venous uh, insufficiency and had uh, multiple wounds that we've uh, been managing and they've been responding well to our efforts with uh, compression. The primary mode of treatment for this patient was treating his underlying venous insufficiency and that was accomplished through a series of um, venous superficial venous ablation procedures as well as sclerotherapy that was accomplished at the AZH Vascular Center right next door. Uh, we have gotten his uh, venous insufficiency well under control. You'll notice that not only do we have very minimal swelling, uh, but you see that um, uh, the tissue is in pretty good shape. Some of the hemosiderin stating that was very prominent has actually started to resolve a little bit, which is very impressive. He'll never uh, respond and go away completely, but he's had some improvements. In fact, I'm going to show you a picture of what this patient looked like when he initially presented. Not only do we have significant swelling, larger wounds, but we have some varicosities that have also uh, been taken care of here through the uh, scleral procedure. So this is our Arabella device. It's an ultrasound debridement device. See, we have a saline coupling solution uh, that comes into the handpiece here. Uh, once the saline uh, comes through the uh, handpiece, it's energized with ultrasonic energy, and we use that to not only debride the wounds, but to provide acoustic streaming and cavitation, which are the two properties from an ultrasound debriding device that actually allow us to debride the wound. You'll see that the saline uh, that is coming through that probe tip, again, carries ultrasonic energy and that is what we're going to use to debride. The important uh, principles with ultrasonic debridement is to uh, sonicate the tissue. So we, we don't just debride quickly, we move in slow, steady uh, motions. And as you sonicate the tissue, it will loosen it. And once you've sonicated the tissue, you can then bring the probe over. This is a curette. Uh, probe and you can slice right underneath that tissue. See we're removing that eschar. This is a great device for the breeding superficial eschar and it just loosens that eschar. Well, I'm curious to see what these are again the wounds that we grafted last week curious to see if we've got complete epithelization and healing or whether there's a small residual wound. Now you might ask yourself why are you removing these eschars and these goda and I'm actually asking myself that question as well. Uh, you could certainly make a case for just leaving that and allowing it to auto debride itself when complete epithelization has taken place underneath that eschar. But I'm actually wanting to take these off to demonstrate the healing progress that was made in just one week with the graft material. The ultrasound energy debrides very gently. It does not disrupt healthy tissue. And voila, this is what I was hoping to see. We've got complete healing. There's neodermis over that wound. Very nice results. That's what I was hoping to see. We're not going to graft those again this time. That is healed. That's a healed wound. Nice result for one week. So now we're going to go ahead and debride the other wounds. 
And again, I'm using the same technique. I'm going to sonicate the tissue. Let the ultrasonic energy provide for acoustic streaming and cavitation. Cavitation is what kills the bacteria. And then after I've sonicated the tissue, I come back with the edge of a curette for the debridement. And you can see how we're just taking that that eschar, that slough, right off the little base. Let's watch this one. See the crusting? And we're going to sonicate all of that. And as you sonicate it, it loosens. And you come right with the edge of the curette and just scrape it off. Loosens very nicely. Many times during debridement, we forget the peri wound tissues. Forget to clean these margins and edges. I like to clean around the wound just as much as I like to debride the central part of the wound. And ultrasound does a nice job of that. Again, what we're illustrating uh, is these two wounds here were grafted last week with the Caceres Omega-3 uh, wound matrix. You can see over a week period, we got great uh, eschar formation, which was removed. I illustrated that to you. And underlying that, we have wounds that have healed uh, with neoepithelium. This uh, epithelium, this neodermis, is very immature. Uh, we're just going to allow that to uh, continue to mature. Certainly a case could be made for not have taken those eschars off, but I wanted to see what happened over the course of a week, and you'll see that we got some great result with that. We have now cleaned these two wounds here, as well as the ones on the medial surface, and we're going to graft these with the Caceres uh, Omega-3. Uh, hopefully get the same result as we got up above. Uh, the ultrasound did a very nice job of cleaning up the fibrin and slough and preparing the wound base. Now we're going to go ahead and prepare the graft and apply those. Uh, we're going to put the patient back in compression. Uh, he did report that he had significant uh, improvement in his pain uh, after the application of the graft, which is always nice to see. Again, we're using the Caceres uh, Omega-3 Wound uh, Dermal Matrix. This is a 7 by 10 uh, centimeter graft. We're not going to need uh, all of that, fortunately. So I think this will be enough graft to allow us to cover all the wounds. I am going to hydrate this. The graft is a little... Uh, easier to apply in a moist state. You can apply it dry if you wish. I like using it uh, moist. Now there are two sides uh, to this graft. As I mentioned, it's uh, processed from Icelandic cod. You see this is the externalized surface. This is where the, uh, the graft met the outside world, uh, the uh, ocean. Uh, and this has been uh, stripped of all uh, surface uh, issues, scales, etc., skin. Um, but you can see that this is the externalized surface. This is the underside, if you will, the uh, basement membrane uh, type uh, of surface. And we're going to go ahead and just harvest enough of this to apply to the wound base. Again, we're going to apply dermal matrix down to the wound base, the externalized surface stays outside. Now these grafts can be secured with suture, staple. Uh, you can also use a buttress type dressing which is what we're going to do. Start our wrap to secure these dressings a little better. The compression is really all you need. As you'll see, I've secured the graps with a bolster dressing with Hydrofera Blue and a little bit of the Visco. We'll follow that with another layer of the Visco. And then this dressing will be maintained for an entire week. We'll have the patient come back in one week, take this dressing off, inspect the graps, and hopefully we'll have as much success as we did last week with complete healing of those sites. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this edition of uh, the Wound Care Window and a unique uh, application and utilization of cellular tissue based products to complete healing of a patient with venous insufficiency non-healing wounds.